that there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the topic. Uh, well, because today's main theme is about cooperation, uh, it is follow up our last session. Uh, so I'm here to present a small case. Uh, I put a title, uh, The Limit, uh, because that's something I want to emphasize. Well, when people are enthusiastically talking about uh, making cooperation and cooperative economics, etc., uh, I see something that uh, we need to pay attention to. Uh, okay, uh, this so first some contextual background. Uh, in Chinese, we had a saying that as small as it is, the sparrow has all the vital organs. This means mm, the story I'm going to tell you here uh, it is pretty small. Uh, you even call it trivial, uh, trivial but uh, it consists of uh, almost uh, uh, most of the issues that we need to uh, consider. Uh, the date of this uh, story is from uh, summer last year uh, to early spring this year. Uh, the location is where I recently moved to uh, a desert village at a far suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, the stakeholders in the story are 28 families. Uh, they live on a remote village road. And the road is not just one road, it has uh, smaller, um, branch, shorter branches. Uh, but uh, the whole area, the whole roads, uh, the main road and the branches are unpaved uh, with no maintenance. Because this road are all on private properties that had an agreement of what they call seismant uh, to kind of donate it to the public to share. So, so there are 28 families uh, being uh, affected or, or relevant. Now the problem is that the main road uh, more or less shared. Why I say more or less? Because some families located on the uh, upper side of the road, they used the road uh, less. And uh, some families live uh, deeper to the south and uh, they had to use the whole road. And uh, some families uh, on branch road, they leave this road earlier. Uh, some has to use uh, and the road all the way to the end. So it's more or less shared. Uh, the, this road is broken. Uh, broken due to a long list of reasons. Uh, but, and these reasons contain interactive circular causalities. Uh, the first reason is the ring. The ring make a little pole, uh, a, a little uh, pool and a hole on the road. And then the second uh, thing is the traffic. It goes through it. Uh, the wheels of the vehicle strike the hole, so make the hole bigger. So the bigger the hole, the more strike. The more striker, the hole uh, become bigger. Uh, and there are constructions going on in the area. So they are very heavy than usual uh, commercial construction uh, trucks. Uh, those very heavy loaded with the stones and uh, with the concrete, etc. And also we have uh, some uh, family, uh, uh, some animal doctor uh, and uh, the veterans uh, on the road doing their business. 
So we also have the heavy trailers of the um, horse trailers, uh, things like that going on the throat. Now, the situation is that uh, we do not have a government here. The road is named by the county, but the county is not responsible for, remain, uh, for maintaining this road. So it's none of their business. The, the only form of government we have is the post office. So the, the post office delivers mails to every uh, house, but because of the problem, the post office choose to retreat. Uh, they say, okay, it's not, it's too dangerous for our uh, delete postman to drive on Euro. So the solution is we're going to set up a, a collective mailbox at the beginning of the road. So you guys just come over to the, the, to, to the mailboxes to collect your mail by yourself. So government is practically none here. And the market, is, nobody knows anybody because these are all acre house. Uh, every house is on one acre land. So uh, land, one acre land, so that uh, uh, there's very minimum interactions among neighbors. Uh, people just to check a little bit when they need to do it during, uh, during the, uh, let's say, walking the dog uh, or have, uh, have some jogging, things like that. So other than that, uh, it, it's a free word. Now, since this problem happened, the only hope or, or, or only challenge to us is how do we do a self-organization to cooperatively solve the problem? So here you see the conditions of the road. Uh, it's getting very deep uh, trenches in the middle of the road. Uh, if, you, if you are not careful to let your car fall into this big hole and you will got stuck there. So, so this situation uh, was formed uh, gradually during the rain and the traffic and the nobody cares. And the, in the end, it became like that. Uh, if there is an emergency, the, the ambulance would not be able to come in. The fire engine would not be coming in. So that is the public problem. After our project, we successfully fixed the road like this. I took this picture yesterday just for this presentation. So how did we do that? Uh, we have no government, no market, just we the people. And this we is very loosely defined by this common problem. Uh, the first, very first beginning is that, uh, my observation is the perception of this problem that belongs to no one, but also belongs to everyone. Uh, a public good problem uh, emerged, but without a, a clear property rights definition. Uh, in other words, without uh, without uh, a clear defined accountability or responsibility. Uh, at the beginning, because of this. This is none of my business, none of your business, none of everybody's business. So nobody cared about the situation. They just try to manu uh, drive their cars very carefully to bypass those holes. So, so there's a long time, a few months that people endured. Uh, but the endurance had a threshold, and the threshold passed. 
so I decided to launch, uh, to do something. And the first thing we did was we put a flyer on a collective mailbox. Says, so hi neighbors, maybe we need to do something about this road. So, so that is the call for participation of the cooperative problem. So we have to come together to figure out how to solve this problem. Uh, for the 28 families, uh, some of them signing up, some of them have responded, some of them, some of them still uh, no, uh, no sound. So we passed the phases of signing up and then we volunteer, we meet and then we're volunteering for various tasks like calling the county and the calling the material suppliers. And there are many tiny tasks needs to be done cooperatively. And, and of course, we need to buy materials. So we have to, and we may have to pay for some labor to do the repair. So we, we cannot avoid the fundraising project. Uh, and during the process, there are all kinds of uh, different opinions jumping up. Uh, some people say that we need to do this, some people say we need to do that. It's very hard to form a consensus of what needs to be done. But in the, in the end, I just want to cut the story short because it's a one year story. Uh, we had the first round, we had 13 families uh, donated money and uh, volunteer to work. And in a second round, we had 15. So, so it's between, it's about half of the families living on this road had contributed and responded. And uh, we passed the whole process of uh, regular organizational dynamics namely forming, storming, norming, and the performing. So there's a lot of uh, argument and the fights and this some, uh, sometimes uh, very hard situations, uh, conflicts, resolutions, etc. So what I want to bring from this story is a hypothesis of another bear curve here. In situations like this, we only have 50, about 50% 50 who cares. And we have about 50% free riders. If free riders here define us, okay, go ahead, you guys do whatever you want to do. It's none of my business, but these people are still using this road daily. So, uh, this is a dynamic observing system, so called, so to speak, the uh, self or, or self uh, second order cybernetic system. Because everybody is observing everybody, and everybody is making a tiny decision about what they need to do uh, to cooperate or not cooperate, to donate or not donate, to contribute or not to contribute. That's what I mean, my topic, the limit of cooperation. In this case, it's set by the actual fund we raised and the volunteer labor we could get. This percentage is about 50% from the idea. Uh, of course, uh, uh, idealistic people will say, okay, everybody should participate. But uh, how do you go there to persuade them that please change your opinion, please join us? Uh, 
we have no way to do that except to just uh, public flyers calling and uh, we even put in uh, build a, a Google group uh, for the mailing list and uh, to let the public discussion to happen. So, so the question I ask all of you is that what could be some ways to raise that percentage? Since you guys are all interested in the topic for cooperation. So I invite you to consider in this situation, in this case, what would you do to make that 50% to 60, 70, even 80%? Uh, we cannot uh, dream for 100% here. And uh, myself noticed a very, very important issue in the whole story is that the, the importance of property rights. In this case, there is not clearly defined the property rights of this road. Therefore, there is not clearly defined responsibility of this road. And, and to go uh, to get into a little bit of further reflection of uh, our works regarding to cooperative cooperation participation kind of uh, economy and politics, uh, I had uh, reported to you about our Wintock Roundtable leadership experiment uh, from 2002 to 2009 inside China before. Uh, so. When, when that project was successful implemented, uh, well, and everybody participated, saw the effectiveness of the deep cooperation enabled by our methods. Uh, we call those methods, we, we call that effectiveness uh, in Chinese into three capacities. Capability. The first one is the bomb like internal mind energy uh, that uh, we were able to ignite uh, from the team members using our methods. And the second is the laser like cooperative synergy that we were able to use facilitation methods to attend and the missile-like goal-directed guidance. Uh, we were criticized that we use a three military term, bomb, laser, and uh, missile. But uh, we would like to emphasize the, the deep cooperative uh, energy that the method can, uh, can foster. But the key is we had, at the end of the day, we had a challenge question from the boss, the, the owner of the company. He, he asked us, he said, participatory management and the roundtable leadership is good, uh, but what if this team, this team he meant his management team, uh, are all consists of about 20 or 24 uh, mid-level managers on various areas. What if this team will produce a result, uh, which means consensus, vision, mission, strategy, et cetera, uh, how to do better business? If that result, uh, that I don't want, uh, he, he asked me, I am the owner of the company. Now you implemented this participatory thing to this. What if they come up something I don't want? I was not able to answer his question at that time. Uh, because that question to me is actually deeper. It means uh, we have a stockholders 
and we have a stakeholders and a which is more important. That I think uh, is something worth our thinking uh, when we talk about a cooperative a cooperation. So in the, to conclude, I would like to um, recommend the four important authors. The first, of course, is Hayek, uh, represented by his this book, The Constitution of Liberty. And the second one, Fernando de Soto. He wrote a very important, in my view, very important book named The Mystery of Capital. Why capitalism triumphs in the West and fails everywhere else. The third one is by Rajan and his co-authors. Uh, it's called the Saving Capitalism from Capitalists. If you are not aware of that, it's a very interesting uh, book. The last one is Good Capitalism, Bad Capitalism, and the Economics of Growth and the Prosperity uh, uh, by Bormio, Pierre Bormio and his co-authors as well. The important points made by these authors are in my last uh, slide. From Hayek, Constitution of Liberty, the point I read is that capitalism is an expanding spontaneous order randomly formed and found needed, found needed by humans almost everywhere. So it is not a social state, nor an ideology. So capitalism is not an ideology, but it is a set of rules of the game, protecting po property rights, obeying contracts, uh, free trade, uh, things like that. So, so it is a spontaneous order. Uh, it happened randomly from some tribe, and then because it's so powerful, so welcome by other human beings, it's expanding to global. The Soros mystery of capital made a very important uh, point as well. He said, it's not a capital, it is the law protecting property rights that has a strength to prosperity. So, so it is ca not capital brings prosperity. It's not a capitalist bringing to the person. It is the law system and centered with property rights. So, so this links back to my little case here. The third book, Saving Capitalism from a Capitalist. Uh,